three, two, one. Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is the Football Reality Podcast, and today we are doing our predictions for the AFC North in the Ravens, Bengals, Steelers, and the Browns. So we got a big last, last, it's very late, honestly, fantasy football draft tonight, $50 buy-in, $500 payout. So um, I'm trying to think of how I should show my teams to you guys, but I'll probably do a live stream if you want, you know, check on the lookout for that. Probably Thursday early, like around like four or five o'clock before um, before the game, just because I have I'm not streaming 20 minutes before the game. I'm gonna watch the game, but besides the point, check that out if you want to see all of my teams. I'm gonna set all my lineups. We got Stardom Sidems coming out later in the week, and yeah, just stay on the lookout. We got predictions. I want to get through every team. I have basically all my predictions wrapped up. So we have the South. The, the West in the AFC to do, as well as the East, North, West, and the South in the NFC. So we're going to do East and the North today, West and the South, Wednesday, NFC East, to, a- AFC East Thursday, and the North Thursday, then the West and the South Friday. So just so we could get it out before the play, before the football season starts, you know, I, I'm a little late to this, so... Again, the camera is the same, so hopefully it's okay quality. Now that that is over, I would like to add one more thing. Please, we're trying to hit 200 subs. Subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot to me if you followed the community. Welcome you to this damn channel. Whatever the point is, check out all the other videos. Appreciate you. Now let's get into this AFC, and I don't know. People are probably going to criticize me, but I have the Bengals winning the division at 13 and 4. It's a very good possibility. Now, the Bengals do have a tougher schedule. A lot of people like to call it a fluke season or a Super Bowl hangover for Joe Burrow. There's been a lot of Super Bowl hangovers in the past. Guys like Kurt Warner, who just Aaron Rodgers, first Super Bowl, haven't been back. Cam Newton, Matt Ryan. A lot of guys who go to their first Super Bowl and they just sometimes they never go back. And that's unfortunately how it goes. But Joe Burrow, I just I can't look at him as that type of player. That one hit, one year, that guy that just doesn't prove anything in the playoffs and in the, in the postseason. The guy brought his team with no offensive line in the playoffs. And that team basically stayed the same and they got better on the offensive line. Joe Burrow's gonna be eager for more. He's gonna want to win. And there's a lot of close, tough games on here. Games like the Buccaneers. The Browns could steal a game, but I think all in all, the Dolphins, the Patriots, the Bills, the Chiefs, even the Saints, all very tough games for the Bengals. But when you look at that team in a perspective, I think it's very possible they can be one of the top seeds in that AFC. Now you look at that offense, Chase, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, even Hayden Hurst. So they have a lot of pieces there. They were going to bring in O.J. Howard. He went to the Texans. So I like that offensive line a lot. That defense, hopefully Jesse Bates plays on the franchise tag for them. You know, you lost Larry Ogunjobi to some, I don't remember the team. I think it was the Steelers actually that picked up Ogunjobi. Um, But besides the point, Ogunjobi's gone. You got DJ Reed on that line. You got Trey Hendrickson, uh, Sam Hubbard is there, I believe. But besides the point, the Bengals are another team in the AFC that I think are all around solid, didn't change much in the offseason, didn't change drastically like a new quarterback or a new head coach. They stayed the same, basically. They just added pieces to the offensive line, a team similar to the Bills that I think have just been solid. Now, I don't want to overhype the Bengals, but... After that Super Bowl run, it really does open up your eyes about how good Joe Burrow is and how competitive he is and how much he wants to win in this league. I believe it. I think he's going to do awesome this year. Potential MVP candidate in my eyes. Second seed, or second, how do I put this? Second team in second place, I said, second place in the AFC North, it's going to be the Baltimore Ravens. And I think the Ravens, even if they don't win, 12 games. I have them at 12 and 5. Even if they don't win 12 games, they're still going to be a good team, I would say. And they're probably going to play second just because the Browns don't have a quarterback. Same thing with the Steelers. Mitch Trubisky is questionable. So when you look at the Ravens, 
I like, I love, well, let me put it this way. Lamar Jackson, I was never really a big fan of him. And, you know, the more I watched him play, the more hate I saw him get. And the more times I'm seeing everyone say, oh, that guy's a running back. Lamar Jackson is him. He is very, very tough. And he definitely deserves a, that huge paycheck. I think he's going to stay in Baltimore. The Ravens should pay him after this season when he brings that team to the playoffs, in my eyes. But when you look at this Ravens team, that defense is definitely top 10. They got a great secondary with Marlon Humphreys, Marcus Peters coming back from injury. We'll see how he does there. Drafting new safety and Kyle Hamilton. So you got some guys there. Um, Calais Campbell, I believe, is still there. But that defense all around is still very, very good. They had a lot of injuries last year with the running backs, with the cornerbacks. So I think this team can come back healthy and actually go very far in the regular season. Lamar Jackson could win comeback player of the year. But besides the point, I just want to say that the Ravens don't have a receiver, which is the only problem in that offense. They traded Hollywood Brown for a first round pick. And I can understand why Lamar Jackson would want to leave. Let's talk about how he liked a Dolphins uniform tweet. And it's it's kind of just, at this point, it's just drama. But when you look at a guy like Lamar Jackson, he's not going to be wrapped up in things like Kyler Murray has done, like deleting all his Cardinal stuff and then re-signing with the team. Uh, Lamar Jackson is a very, very good football player. And I don't think he's going to get wrapped up in any of that crazy stuff. Lamar Jackson is focused. He's dedicated to the game and I think he improves. He's been he put on a, a very a lot of muscle. So I think he's faster, he's stronger. He's coming back better than ever from this foot injury and is he's going to get better. This is the thing about Lamar Jackson. Every single year I've noticed him increasingly get better at least every single year last year obviously he got hurt but I noticed his arm he changed his mechanics he still played better in terms of how his play on the field was last year I know the stats I know that he got injured but I do believe Lamar Jackson is still going to be great for that Ravens offense even if they have a number one receiver in Rashad Bateman and a great tight end in Mark Andrews that team is still going to be great he's going to be battling in every single game and that Ravens head coach, John Harbaugh, all around. Just a great team. Great defense, great head coach, great quarterback. The only thing it really lacks is the receiving core. They got Marshall Yonda in the draft as well as Kyle. Not Marshall Yonda. They got a Marshall Yonda type center in Tyler Linderbaum. It reminds you of that type of pick. So Ravens look very solid. I've been talking about them for a while now, so we'll just move on. Three and three in the division, I think, that the Bengals split. The Browns split and the Steelers can potentially split with the Ravens because they always find a way to beat him. And Lamar Jackson just kind of chokes his chokes a game away against one of those two teams. Moving on to the Browns in six and ten. I have them going two and six in the division. And this was a tough one because I had I went back and forth on wins and losses for the Browns. And they don't have a quarterback. They have a great defense. They got a great run game. They have Amari Cooper, if he could stay healthy, Donovan Peoples-Jones, David Njoku. So they have some talent. They have did, they have a great defense. Denzel Ward, Miles Garrett. Um, what's the guy's name on the Rams? We'll just, we'll just stick with the star players because I can't think hard enough to remember everyone on that Browns defense. But there's, there's a lot of other pieces that are just stars, not all stars. Besides the point, the Browns are still a very solid team. The only problems I really have is with Jacoby Brissett. I think Deshaun Watson comes back. He could steal a game maybe against the Saints. That'll be a tough game for him. But the second half of the year isn't, you know, the worst for Deshaun Watson. So I think the Browns can be a solid average team. If they had Deshaun Watson, maybe they could be that third wild card team. But I think we're going to leave that for the AFC West, unfortunately. Deshaun Watson out until week 13 against the Texans. So we'll see what happens there. Browns. Again, all-around good team. They shouldn't have traded Baker away. They did him dirty just a little bit, but I still think Baker can play. I think Baker's going to upset them week one, potentially. Moving on to the last team that I think is going to have their first losing record since 2003, and I talked about it in my bold predictions video. If you want to check it out, we did top 10 fantasy bold predictions as well as top 10 predictions 
bold predictions for the 2022 NFL season. And this was one of them, the Steelers. I said the Steelers would have their first losing record. And I'm pretty sure that's bold. You know, Mike Tomlin has never had a losing record with the Steelers. He went eight and eight three times. And knowing the Steelers, they'll probably find a way to go eight, eight and one. But I'm still saying, and originally I was going to go with like four or five wins for the Steelers. But looking at that division, I, I don't see them getting, you know, all win six. So they're going to steal a game against the Browns. They're going to steal a game against the Ravens. And I think they could even win against the Patriots. So, and then the other game that I was thinking about was the Eagles. And I'm thinking like Tomlin could just be in Jalen Hurts' head and they could take that game too. So I think the Steelers range from anywhere from like four to eight wins. I don't think they go over eight wins. I just, I just really don't believe it. That Steelers defense, it's it's good and all. You got TJ Watt, you got... Um, not many cornerbacks. You don't have any cornerbacks, really. Not a number one guy, at least. Tremaine Edmonds is playing safety. You got Miles Jack playing linebacker. So Cam Hayward, it, it's just a solid defense. It's above average. It's just there. It's not top 10, in my opinion. Probably top 15. But it's, it's just there. TJ Watt is basically the man-child of that defense. He's the only guy there outside of Cam Hayward. And obviously Minka Fitzpatrick, a guy I'm forgetting. But besides the point, the Steelers, 2-6 and six in the division. They're not touching the Bengals. I don't care what anybody says. They're not touching the Bengals. They, the last time the Steelers... The, I'm pretty sure the Steelers, when they played the Bengals, the Bengals outscored them. It was like 80 to like 20 or something. It was something ridiculous. And for the people that think that, oh, yeah, the Steelers are still a game against the ba It's not happening. The Bengals are new and improved. Trust me. I know these are a little bit on the bolder side in terms of predictions, but we have to be realistic. And this is what this channel is about, the reality of this division. And this is how I think it's going to go. The Steelers, now this is the only, only outlier, is Mitch Trubisky. Has Trubisky changed over the years? I don't think so, personally. I think he's still going to make a couple stupid mistakes and end up throwing the ball to the other team. But, you know, Mike Tomlin could turn him around and he could be a better upgrade over Big Ben. Now, the reason I think the Steelers have a losing record, one, that entire AFC got better. Number two, Big Ben, as bad as he was last year, he still knew the system inside and out. And he's been the Steelers quarterback you know, his entire career. So this is why I don't think a guy who is new to the Steelers offense in Mitch Trubisky, who isn't necessarily a bad quarterback, but he didn't have the best luck with the Bears. He has got a, he's got a lot of talent, but he has to be in it mentally. If he's not, I, I don't see a chance for the Steelers. Even if Kenny Pickett comes in, I think Pickett will show up at least one game. And it's hard to say because he is the third string, apparently. Maybe the backup. But he's he's not ready. There's going to be a time where he takes over 100%. And he's going to be the franchise quarterback for the Steelers. But that wraps it up for the predictions for the AFC North. Let me know if I'm crazy about the Steelers down in the comments. But check out the videos in the future. We're going to just try and make... A big brand with this channel here. I'm going all in. You know, we got 183 subs. So I appreciate everyone checking out the channel, giving me, showing me love, and just props to another football season, honestly, 2022. I'm ready for it. We got bets on the way. FanDuel, DraftKings, all that type of stuff. Stardom, Sidums, and I'm going to try and go live on YouTube as well as TikTok and Instagram. So check me out on other platforms. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.